Welcome to another edition of A New Me, your weekly consultation with the Washington, D.C. area's best doctors and professionals. Our guest experts help you learn about the latest medical advances and procedures by providing you with the real information necessary to help you eliminate the dangers of making the wrong medical and cosmetic enhancement decisions. Get ready for your consultation. Coming up, we will be on location at the Comprehensive Sleep Care Center in Lansdowne, Virginia, discussing the latest advances in sleep disorder treatments and how they can help you get the sleep that you've always desired with one of this area's top sleep care specialists, Dr. Charu Sabarwal. Dr. Sabarwal is board certified in sleep medicine and completed her residency at Johns Hopkins University at GBMC and received her fellowship from Rush University in Chicago, Illinois. Welcome, Dr. Sabarwal. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank oh, it's you. our pleasure to have you on. We've got a lot to talk about regarding a very important topic indeed, and namely sleep disorders and how to effectively treat them. And we appreciate you joining us today. I understand there's going to be a patient that's going to be coming on a bit later as well. Yes. So I wanted to begin uh, right off the bat, doctor, by asking you if you can please tell us what are some of the most common sleep disorders so we have an understanding. Sure. Well, some of the most common sleep disorders that we see routinely in our practice would be uh, sleep apnea, which is further of two kinds, obstructive and central in nature. Some of the other common sleep disorders that we see uh, do include restless legs, insomnia, hypersomnolence, narcolepsy. And in the pediatric age group, we do commonly see sleep apnea as well. We also encounter, encounter a lot of sleep talking, sleep walking, and other behavioral sleep disorders. Um, another common sleep disorder that we encounter, especially in the teenage group, is something uh, that we call delayed sleep phase syndrome. It's um, a circadian rhythm disorder or a biological clock disorder, if you may say, uh, where the teenagers would prefer to go to bed really late at night, maybe at two or three in the morning, and wake up uh, maybe 10 o'clock in the morning or around noontime, and they have a lot of difficulty uh, carrying on their regular sleep-wake schedule when they have to go to school at eight o'clock in the morning. So these are some of the common sleep disorders that we see. And how prevalent is for instance, sleep apnea as well as insomnia? Well, the prevalence of sleep apnea in the age group of 30 to 60 years of age is up to 24% in men. That's significant. And, yes, and up to 9% in women. So men definitely have a higher prevalence of sleep apnea, but in the ages, age groups of 30 to 60, it is very prevalent. Almost one in four men have it. And what causes the sleep apnea? So sleep apnea is essentially of two types. The most commonly seen, sla seen sleep apnea is obstructive sleep apnea. Uh, essentially, the muscles in the throat, including the tongue, relax when the patient sleeps to the extent that the airway closes off and blocks off the airway. And this can happen now several hundred times at night. Mm. The brain now has to wake up several times to maintain the patency of your airway, and that disrupts the sleep of the patient. And even though they're sleeping or are in bed seven to eight hours at night, they don't wake up feeling rested because the quality of their sleep is not good enough. Every time their brain's having to wake up to open the airway, they can get pulled out of their slow wave and REM sleep, which are the essential, essential stages of sleep. And as such, the quality of sleep is not good enough and they feel tired and exhausted. Very interesting. Now, the central sleep apnea component is a less commonly seen, uh, seen form of sleep apnea. That's usually seen in patients who have congestive heart failure um, or right after a stroke or other neurological disorders. But the most commonly seen sleep apnea is definitely the obstructive sleep apnea. Could you please describe some of the typical symptoms that one would be looking at? The most common symptoms that a patient may encounter is, uh, first of all, loud snoring. Um, very commonly, the patient's bed partner may have noticed that they stop breathing at night and that pause in the breathing might be followed by a loud snort. Sometimes the patients themselves notice that they are waking up gasping and choking for air. Dry mouth at night, nasal congestion, waking up with headaches, having multiple awakenings at night, or having excessive daytime sleepiness or fatigue are also some of the common symptoms of sleep apnea. Are there risks associated with sleep apnea? Most definitely. Untreated sleep apnea, we definitely know now, is a risk factor for high blood pressure. Every time the patient stops breathing at night, there is an increase in the sympathetic activity, 
basically it elevates the blood pressure of the patient and that leads to a carryover effect during the daytime and can lead to a diagnosis of hypertension. It can also lead to um, diabetes. Mm -hmm. It is a known risk factor for heart disease including arrhythmias, uh, congestive heart failure, um, and even heart attacks. So we're looking at some very serious problems potentially there uh, associated with sleep disorders as far as risks go. Yes, it actually also is a risk factor for strokes. Speaking of all this, mm -hmm. what treatment options are available? There are several ways that we can treat sleep apnea. The gold standard treatment still would be considered the positive airway pressure therapy. So essentially we schedule another sleep test in the laboratory. The patient's brought in and hooked up again. This time the patient has a mask on their face. That mask is hooked to uh, a machine called CPAP, which stands for Continuous Positive Airway Pressure. It's essentially an air pump, which is blowing air at the patient's face with some pressure, and that pressure is splinting open the airway. Mm. Throughout the night, we then titrate the pressure up till we reach a final pressure where the patient has stopped snoring and is not having any more obstructions or at least the obstructions are within a normal acceptable range. The patient is then um, given the CPAP at that titrated or prescribed pressure. My goodness. Now there are other ways that we can treat sleep apnea. There are surgical options available. There is something called oral appliance that is uh, ideally custom fit according to the inside of your mouth. Okay. Um, then weight loss definitely is uh, a big cure. It is a big contributor in sleep apnea and weight loss definitely helps with the treatment of sleep apnea as well. Well, I appreciate you educating us on treatment options. I think that's very going to be very beneficial to a lot of us out there. Uh, as far as locations go throughout this area, for the viewers that are watching Dr. Saberwal, can you please tell us how many locations you have? Sure. We are currently practicing out of two locations. We have a location in Lansdowne, Virginia, and we also practice in Chantilly, Virginia. So okay. these are the two active locations we have right now. We're now going to meet Warren, who's a patient of Dr. Saberwal. Welcome, Warren. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. I always appreciate it when patients take the time in their busy lives to come down and share their experiences for a few moments. So on that note, I'd like to begin, if I may, Warren, by asking you what sleep problems were you experiencing prior to coming to Dr. Saberwall? Well, I had initially looked at the fact that I may have had a problem. So two years ago, I went to an ENT uh, here in Sterling, and that ENT did a minor surgery on my ear. And uh, within that, oper that minor operation, she said after the operation, I should look into having a sleep study done. I, at that point, felt that it was pretty important to do it, but I neglected it. Okay. I denied it. A year later, I had a reoccurring issue with my ear. She urged me even further to have the sleep study done. She said my life depended on it. That's serious. My goodness. I took it seriously at that point. Yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> so then what happened from that point? The ENT um, immediately um, set me up to come here to the Comprehensive Sleep Center. And uh, they worked me in, and the sleep study that they set me up with came up with severe apnea. And on the apnea range of uh, 0 to 100, I scored an 86. My goodness. In the apnea mm -hmm. world, that's pretty bad. Yes, it is. Yeah. Obviously, it was affecting your life and a very serious problem indeed, Warren. Yeah, I, I took a lot of uh, a heat from my wife, and uh, that's where it all stemmed from. Even my cats wouldn't even sleep in the same room that I was in snoring so profusely. Um, mm -hmm. I really had to do something. So um, Dr. S set me up with a plan and um, got me on a, on a CPAP machine. Um, the machine itself is very easy to use. And uh, we did some tweaking to get me to a very acceptable level of uh, sleep, which is the most important thing. <laughs> yes, it is. Now, how long, if I may ask, did the treatment take? Um, I've been on it since last November. Okay. And I'm to the point now where I'm very satisfied of the outcome. I take it uh, you came, what, on a regular basis for several months? Monthly basis. Monthly or basis. In, in different uh, style treatments or uh, upgrades or whatever, every two weeks, just to, just to keep uh, Dr. S 
aware of the situation. Okay, and I take it you're very pleased with the results? Yeah, my wife is. Um, I, I clean the house a lot more in the morning. I'm up to doing new projects. I'm a lot happier. My physical uh, well-being, I think, is better, and my mental well-being is definitely better. You're a new you again. Yeah. Too Literally. <laughs> I am so happy to hear this. Obviously, you're getting a good night's rest. Yeah. Uh, your energy is back, your, your enthusiasm, and, and everything else that you just described after uh, treatments with Dr. Sabarwal. Yeah. A night and day difference from last November to now. Um, when I came here in November, I really thought I was on the a borderline of just collapsing my whole being. I, I felt like all aspects of my life were being affected by me not getting a good night's sleep. Sure. Yeah, wow. it was it was a pretty big uh, pretty big change. It was a lifestyle change. I feel like I'm more compassionate and more uh, uh, clear to to make solid decisions and 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 actually feel really feel the effects of getting better sleep. Well, Warren, on that note, I am so happy to hear how you are now and moving thank forward. You. And on that note, I'd like to thank you for sharing your experience and joining us and being a guest on A New Me. Absolutely. You're welcome. We're now back with Dr. Saberwal. I must say Warren's life literally changed in every area. Yes, indeed it did. Because when we first diagnosed him, he did have very severe sleep apnea. And since he's been on the treatment, um, he has felt a whole lot better. And that is very typical of how a lot of our patients feel once we start treatment for them. I wanted to ask you uh, regarding follow-up visits. Mm -hmm. I know in Warren's case, he was mm -hmm. coming once a month for a while. Uh, is that typical or do you adjust it based on patient? We do adjust it based on patient to patient, uh, but regardless, every patient will have a regular follow-up with us. Once the patient is started on CPAP therapy, for example, this is in case of sleep apnea, the machines that we order do have the capability of recording how many obstructions the patient is having while he's using the machine at home on the prescribed pressure. Uh, what time the patient puts the machine on, what time the patient takes it off, the machine is actually able to capture that. If the mask uh, that the patient's wearing is not sealing well enough and is leaking, the machine can capture that as well because these things can interfere in the optimal treatment of the patient. So we always bring them in in about a month after they've been set up to download that memory chip that is in the back of the machine and just make sure that the pressure is actually doing what it's supposed to. We do see them even after they've been optimally treated, they're on the right pressure, they're feeling better, we still will see them at least once a year to make sure there's not a big change in their weight. Because as I mentioned earlier, also weight does have a lot to do with sleep apnea. A gain in the weight can worsen their sleep apnea and they may require more pressure. A loss in their weight may improve their sleep apnea and they might not require as much pressure as they are on. And more pressure unnecessarily is of course not good for the patient. No, not at all. And now we've only got a few moments left, Dr. Mm -hmm. Saberwal. I have to ask you before I let you go, you and your practice here, the Comprehensive Sleep Care Center, have developed a reputation of excellence throughout this region as far as in the treatment and care of sleep disorder patients. And I wanted to ask you what separates you and your practice mm -hmm. apart from so many of the others throughout this area? Well, in the true sense of the name, it is comprehensive uh, sleep treatment for the patient, and I think that's what sets us apart. We don't only deal with sleep apnea, we manage patients who have other sleep disorders uh, like insomnia. Uh, patients, we see a lot of patients who have a lot of increased sleepiness during the day, and they do not have sleep apnea. Those patients have what we call hypersomnolence, or sometimes narcolepsy, depending on um, how sleepy they are and what stages of sleep are noticed on their daytime tests. Uh, so we do provide um, tests uh, that are used to diagnose other sleep disorders besides sleep apnea. We do see kids to and above, so we can provide um, uh, treatment for all patient populations, um, including um, all kinds of sleep disorders that I briefly mentioned earlier in the interview. And on that note, I would like to thank you, Dr. Saberwal, for joining us and being a guest on A New Me. And truly enlightening us and educating us on some very serious issues, obviously sleep disorders, and what effective treatment options we have available so we can hopefully get that good night's sleep and feel better moving forward. So thanks again for joining us. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure.